Hey everybody, so we're back today to do another installment of how to prepare for your new pet. Today we're doing how to prepare for your new ferret. Things you need to have around. We will provide a link in the description below the video for you to go and download this checklist for yourself so you can print it off and use it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with today on our new ferret checklist, first thing on our list is the leash and the harness. Anyways, as I was saying, this may not even fit a kit, a baby ferret, when you first get them, just because even on the smallest setting, they are so tiny when you get them that, um, or they are often so tiny when you get them that this may not even work. Um, but have one anyways just in case and it's good for them to get used to this very early. You have to start getting them used to it immediately. Um, and this will be a lifesaver. Um, it stops them from getting under things that they would be able to very easily get under otherwise, like doors or furniture. This would actually make it more difficult for them so you can stop them. And having the leash is obviously very useful because just like with training a puppy, you can always step on the leash and stop them or just attach it to yourself. Okay, like so the next thing we have on our list today is the food and water bowls. Attachable preferred. Any small so. animal bowls are usually attachable to the cage. Um, so this is, you would take this off. So the bowl comes out, the bowl fits out. Ferrets are notorious for um, spilling their water, trying to move objects, getting under their food bowls. Uh, they like to move stuff around. So you definitely want things that are attached, if you can, to the cage. So the little clip comes off. I'll just put that in here for now. And then, so this would go on the inside of the cage. And then this would go on the outside of the cage, on the other side of the bars. And then you would put the screw on like that. And then it won't move, hopefully. More than likely it won't move. So that can be food or water. There's also another type of bowl that is like this. Now the attachment on the bottom, I don't have it. It's actually in use on the cage right now. But I will attach a picture if I can find one online. And you attach the base to the cage and then all you have to do, this fits into the slot and you turn it so that it was locked in. Um, and then they can't move it. This is actually preferable. There's actually ones that are about this size but much wider. We use those for the food bowls. Again, I'll try and find pictures that I can attach after this clip. But these are the, these are the ones I like the best. And then for water, you can use these. Some ferrets prefer drinking out of bowls and some prefer drinking out of an actual like water bottle that you would use for a small animal. We have a large one that's actually for a dog and it's a no drip, um, which you would probably see in our ferret cage and enrichment video. But again, I'll try and find a picture to attach it in between this clip for you. Okay, the next thing, food. We live in a small city and it's really hard to find good ferret food here. Um, we did not start on raw when they were babies, which we should. Whenever you start, um, I guess with any pet, it's better to start them on something early if you want them to get used to it. That being a harness, get used to being handled by humans touching different parts of their body to get them used to it. That also includes for ferrets, the type of food that you're gonna give them. We started trying raw far too late. We're still trying it, but it's not working very we well ferret yet. food. We also use a very high quality, high protein cat food that we mix in with that. And then when we started raw and it didn't work out too well, we started our puppy on this dehydrated, high protein, freeze dried, food it's dry and you're supposed to add water to it and break it up into pieces the ferrets love it it's super high protein freeze dried yeah anything high protein ferrets are supposed to be eating and hunting in the wild so high high protein is what they require toys chew toys balls squeaky etc okay 
So, toys, we have a few here. Ferrets love chewing on rubber, so we have a tough rubber Kong because they will chew and chew and chew and chew and break off pieces if it's too soft, too soft a rubber. So we got the black one that's supposed to be the tougher Kong. So there's a rubber Kong. This is a ball with a bell in it. Aya loves that thing. Coon and Aya sort of like this. It's rubber. They like to chew on it. I think the bumps feel kind of neat. It's not a favorite toy, but they definitely like it. Coon loves chewing on this ball. Uh, it's a chuck it, rubber chuck it ball. He loves that thing. Um, Aya, these are Aya's two favorite toys. This is a burlap dog toy. It's a burlap dog and it's a dog toy that was given to our last dog as a Christmas present and he never really liked it. Um, Aya has adopted this thing. She carries it around with her, hides it from everybody else. Yeah, it's uh, her favorite toy. She also has taken a shine to this giraffe. It had arms at one point, but her and Jin like to play tug of war, as you can see in one of our video, one of our other videos. And it no longer has the arms tucked into the holes here. They came out. Anyway, those are Aya's favorites. She carries them and hides them around. Both ferrets like to hide toys. Ferrets are notorious for stealing and hiding things. Our ferrets like to hide toys. Not so much anything else, but the toys are a big one. They usually stash them actually under this couch. You usually, usually find them under the couch there or way in the corner behind the behind the bed or behind a treat couch. Treats. Training and chew tra Coon's not big on treats. Anyway, Aya likes the freeze-dried chicken bits as treats. She likes those quite a bit. She also likes these, she's a chewer. She's a biter and a chewer, not a biter, but she likes to bite and chew things. She doesn't bite people. So she's a mouthy one. So we give her these chew sticks and she actually really likes them. And it helps her get that, that out of her system. So that works really well. And uh, the other treat, which I don't have here, is another cat food that they get for potty treats and they really, really like it. It's another cat food venison and salmon taste of the wild i think green bag yeah they love that food as a treat uh, those are potty treats mainly though and i don't have that bag here again i will try and insert that picture for you um, another treat is actually this actually helped coon when he lost weight too and we would mix this in with some soft food we'd soak some pellets in water and then add this in a little bit of this and he that would that spurred him to eat more this is apparently good for stimulating a ferret's appetite if they're not eating very well like if they've been sick or had surgery or just not doing very well yeah this stuff worked really good for coon i was really really impressed actually that's uh, uncle jim's duck soup mix bed blanket hammocks and cubes and cage okay so i don't have any beds and blankets here but we do have a whole video on ferret cages and enrichment which um, was a very popular video it went over really well um, i would suggest taking a look at our ferret cage and enrichment video um, i may link it to this video afterwards in one of the cards so that you can get to it easily um, I will also try to insert some pictures. I made cubes and hammocks as well, but you can also buy them if you don't have time for that sort of thing. Um, and the beds you have to be careful on. We had to use blankets for a while, but even that, I uh, chewed all anything fuzzy or foamy and would start to eat it. So we had to take all that away from her. We tried blankets. She would chew on the blankets. Um, she's okay now. She's grown out of it and she gets, I guess maybe she gets more exercise because she plays with the dog, maybe that's helped. But anyways, so be careful with the bedding. Always keep an eye out on what they might be chewing. After that, the cage. You'll also see that in our ferret enrichment, but I will try to insert a picture for you. Pet carrier. We also did a pet product review on this carrier. This is what we use for the ferrets. And we can actually fit them both in the one. 
It's a Pet Ego Marsupak. Um, the mesh is claw proof. Aya had actually destroyed the first bag I got her, which was a cat carrier, cat or puppy carrier, and she destroyed the mesh, put a hole in it very easily. This, however, she, they, she claws at it mostly, but even Coon has a little bit, and they haven't been able to do anything to it. So, pretty impressive with the construction of this bag. I've been pretty impressed. Very useful. Sturdy. Then an X-Pan or Playpen. We had this in our How to Prepare for Your New Puppy. I will try to insert another picture for you. That's super handy if you need to give them another area and a little bit of freedom, but you don't, maybe they, you know, like with Aya, she couldn't fit a harness yet, so we put her in there and gave her some extra space. Brush and comb. We use the puppy slicker brush. We use this for all the animals, actually. This was Harley's brush, and now we use it for Jin and Sarge and Aurora. I've tried to find a brush like this. It's super soft to wire bristles, but really soft. It's called a puppy slicker. Anyway, yeah, I love this brush. And so we use that on the ferrets too. We don't brush them too often. They don't, they shed, but it's more like a wiry hair. And then we have a comb, just your basic comb. Ferrets are itchy creatures. They seem to be really itchy all the time, so brushing and combing them makes them feel good. It gets to areas that they can't get to. You'll often see them twitching and flipping and flopping, trying to bite at any kind of itch or scratch that they've got. Nail clippers and styptic powder. I don't have the styptic powder here. I will go grab it. But these are the nail clippers that he likes to use when he cuts them. He does the ferret nails. I just assist. There we go. So these are the nail clippers. You can use regular nail, cl nail clippers too. These tend to have a bit of a hook at the end, which he said that he ma tries to match up with the hook of the nail and it sort of makes it easier for him to line things up. So there's those ones. And we also have a video on clipping nails for cats, dogs, and ferrets, which you might find useful to watch as well. So, and this is a regular nail clipper as well. He finds that human nail clippers are a good size and they're easy to control, sturdy, so you don't slip or do anything that might cause harm to them when you're cutting their nail, because their nails are quite small. Powder. So if you happen to cut into the quick of the nail, which is the blood vessel that runs through all the nails, then it'll bleed and it can bleed a lot depending on the animal. So styptic powder, you just put a bit of powder on the end and it'll sort of clot the blood so it stops bleeding. Nail clippers, styptic powder, Q-tips or cosmetic pads for ear cleaning. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Q-tips, I wouldn't suggest cotton balls because they seem to fray so easily and they're so loose you can get little hairs of the cotton balls in their ears. Um, again, I just assist, I don't do the actual cleaning, but I he uses a Q-tip and just, I will scruff them and hold their bum as you'll see in our nail clipping video. And he'll just use a Q-tip and get out the extra dirt. Baby shampoo and towels. Now, to bath a ferret, we use baby shampoo. That was the best suggestion we could find. Super sensitive, easy on the skin, sensitive skin, so this doesn't bother them. Um, Again, start bathing them early, but don't do it often. Um, ferrets, even though they have their scent glands removed, will still have, it's only their main scent glands that are often removed before you purchase them or rescue them or whatever. Um, they still have other scent glands that will produce a smell. So some people, I don't mind the smell, I don't find it that strong, but some people are really bothered by it. Anyways, if you wash them too often, you will cause them to produce excess oils in their skin as well as produce excess odor. So don't wash them too often. We do it once every couple months. With the dog we do once a month, but for ferrets we do it once every couple months. Boxes and litter. Okay, I will insert pictures of two different types of litter boxes. Our favorite ones are the rectangle high back 
litter boxes. They're a big size, they're large, but they tend to stay put easier. Um, again, ferrets like to move stuff around and litter boxes are no different. They will try to push it around, they will dive into the litter. Um, the litter we use is the corn cob litter. We use corn cob litter. It's worked out really well. Now, just a tip. If you don't leave some of the old litter in the box when you put all the new litter in, when you change out the litter, they will inevitably roll around in it and knock it everywhere. So I always leave a little layer of old litter, pour the new stuff in and then mix it up and then they don't do that. So just a tip for you on that one. Uh, finger brush and ferret toothpaste. Okay. We actually found out that for us anyways, the finger brush did not work out very well for us. Um, it doesn't fit in their mouth very easily. Um, depending on the ferret and depending on the human and whether you have help or not, we just found that using a tip was much easier to get into their mouth and rub it on their teeth. So Q-tips are very handy for ferret, ferret care. Now, the toothpaste we got was an actual, I think it's Marshall ferrets, see if I can zoom in. It's a dental gel, there you go, dental gel for ferrets. It's the only one I have found, and that's what I did. I found this online, nobody here actually carries this. So I ordered that in and we do it every other day. Just rub it into their teeth, front and back. There's two of us though, we do it together, so it's a little bit easier, but anything for nail clipping, teeth, that sort of thing, if you are trying to do it by yourself, maybe wait till they're tired. Ferrets can become almost unmovable when they're tired and sleeping, so sometimes that's a good time to try and do it. Try and do any of the grooming things, especially if your ferret's not into it. Coon is super easy to do grooming on, so that hasn't ever been an issue, but I is a little more active although she likes the tooth brushing more than Coon does so. veterinarian stuff so when you bring home your ferret you when you purchase them you will probably find that you've gotten a health certificate and that will usually state so when they were born shipping date then you'll also get a chance, a card attached so that you can register the baby fair. 26, 2015. So this is Aya's. Okay. And then they send you a birth certificate for them, which I don't um, have. The other thing you can think about when you go to the vet for the first time, you will want to find a vet that will give distemper shots for ferrets. They have discontinued them in Canada, so we had to find a vet in our small town that was willing to bring in a puppy distemper vaccination and do a puppy series. So we did find a great vet for that. And so they will get distemper and rabies. It is really important, especially if you ever do bring them outside or socialize them a lot to get them vaccinated. Um, flea meds. We just do it in the summer when they go outside more. And we'll get them flea medication. There is actually a advantage. There is even a picture of a ferret on the box. So. You are safe to use it on your ferret. Just ask your veterinarian. Always bring your ferret into the vet when you first bring them home or soon after. Get them set up with a vet, get them checked out. Okay, so first vet check will be done in the first set of vaccinations. It's usually done also. They're usually spayed or neutered and they will not usually have had flea meds. You'll know, usually have to get that on your own birth records okay from the breeder vet records receipt for purchase and extras tunnels and tents the duck soup I already showed you under the treats and ferret veet or ferret lax okay so the tunnels and tents again in our ferret enrichment I will try and attach a picture of a tunnel but this is a tent that we got for them we they like it they do like it they liked it more when we first got it now then there's also Furovit, which is a vitamin paste. There's, these are pretty high sugar, so we don't do this too often. We only do it really when they seem to be maybe catching a cold or a little under the weather. 
ferrets are not very easy or they're very prone to catching colds and the flu from humans so you have to be really careful with your ferrets wash your hands a lot when you're sick and actually even maybe stay away from them altogether because colds and flu can very quickly turn into something fatal for them uh, ferret lax because aya gets hairballs so we give her ferret lax and sometimes that's from her chewing stuff but nowadays it's a real life hairball so we give her ferret lax it gives her diarrhea soon after because their digestion tracts are so short it comes right out but it cleans her out so it actually works really well again i think this is higher in sugar so we don't do this unless she absolutely needs it but it helps so it's a good tool okay i believe that is everything we have gone through everything on the list if you have any questions at all or comments please put them in the comment section below and we will reply soon and again the link to download this checklist for yourself it will be in the description below this video